Okay, so for 23, we want to um, determine whether this geometric series is convergent or divergent, and it's going to be convergent um, if and only if the absolute value of the ratio is less than 1. This is because for a geometric series, it's a it's an infinite sum, right? So the only way for you to keep adding terms and Lucy and still have your sum stay um, convergent is if those terms that you're adding at some point they essentially go to zero, and that's only possible whenever this ratio, this r to the power of n, is less than one. Because if I take say one half and I raise it to a million, that's going to go to zero. But if the ratio is bigger than one, the absolute value at least, if you raise it to a very large number, that's not going to go to zero. Um, so for 23, we're going to have the sum from one to infinity of minus three to the power of n minus 1 all over 4 to the power of n. So before we can um, discuss, you know, whether it's convergent, divergent, the sum, we do have to change it uh, to, we have to index it correctly. The reason that we have to index it correctly is because the geometric sum, it begins with a r to the power of 0, which is just the same thing as a, right? The first term is just going to be the constant. The second term is going to be a r to the power of 1. The third term is going to be a r to the power of 2, and so on. So if because the index here is 1, if I plug in 1 for the index, on the top, I'm going to have minus 3 to the power of 1 minus 1, so minus 3 to the power of 0. So the top is indexed correctly, right? But the bottom is not, because if I plug in 1, the first index, I'm just going to have 4 to the power of 1. So you can see that the top is going to be the first index, but the bottom is going to be the second index, so they're kind of out of phase. So what we have to do here is we have to correct the bottom part because we do want to have n minus 1 here. We want to have it evaluating 0 whenever we plug in 1. Um, but in order to do that, then we have to multiply it by 4 over 4 here. Because if we do so, this 4 on the denominator, we're going to... Uh, maybe let me write this here separately. times 4 over 4, um, and let me just rearrange this, that's going to be 4 times 4 to the power of n over 4, and which is the same thing as going 4 times 4n minus 1. Since this 4 here, it has a, it's actually has an exponent of minus 1, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to instead turn this into that's going to be minus 3 to the power of n minus 1, and that's going to be times 4, and then it's going to be 4 to the n minus 1, right? And once we've done this, we're just going to rewrite this, um, which is going to be the same thing as sum from 1 to infinity. So the first part is just 1 fourth. I've broken it down and then times, I'm going to now join this minus 3 to the n minus 1 over 4 to the n minus 1. I'm going to join that into a single term, all raised to the n minus 1. So once I've done this, you can now see that it everything matches up nicely in the sense that I do have a term here, which is my a, right? And I do have my ratio here. And this ratio, whenever I plug in the first index, which is 1, 1 minus 1, the first term is going to be to the power of 0, which is what I want. So once we've done this, we can clearly see that a is 1 fourth, and r is going to be minus 3 over 4. And we can see that the absolute value of minus 3 over 4 is definitely less than 1, so it means that it converges. So if it converges, we can now use the formula for the sum, which is this guy here. So it therefore means that the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 fourth times minus 3 over 4 to the n minus 1 is going to be a, so remember a is 1 fourth, all over 1 minus r, so 1 minus minus 3 fourths. So this is the same thing as, let me, maybe. So this is the same thing as going 1 fourth all over 1 minus minus 3 fourths is going to be 1 plus 3 fourths all over 7 fourths, right? Which is just the same thing as 1 over 7. So that here is the, um, 
the sum for this convergent geometric series.